I'll start this video out in the hall because it's a little bit darker so you can see the marvellous effect of this device called the cranial trioxinator. It's not really called the cranial trioxinator. It's called the trioxinator and the clue is in the name as to its function. And it's a very close relation of the violet ray and the violet wand and the idea is that you massage your balding bits with it and it miraculously encourages the follicles to grow new hair or stimulate them and create more hair growth. And it's firmly targeted at people who are developing male pattern baldness and it's a miracle a hair growth cure, basically. So let's take a look at it and see how it actually works. So here it is in the light. And I have to apologise to Gordon because he sent this from Canada way earlier in the year and I haven't taken it to bits yet or made a video about it. But I am making up for that by doing it now. And one of the reasons I didn't do it before was because I, I couldn't actually work out how to open it. I think I've sussed out how it may open now. So let's make the video. Now, the idea behind this is very much, as I say, related to the violet wand type thing, because this is a, a quack medical device. This is a modern version called it Darson Val. Darson Val, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that, but uh, it's sort of violent wand ish, and it uh, is basically an Audin coil inside. This is one I took apart in an earlier video. You can see all the chew marks around it, which that's not actually where it was supposed to open, but live and learn. The, uh, how did this open again? I think it was. The screw down the end, it was the screw down the end, I'm pretty sure that held it uh, closed, and then the end came off as well. But this thing is very reminiscent of the original uh, Violet ones, but a more modern electronic version. And what it does is it puts out a, a high voltage, high frequency by plucking a high voltage transformer. And uh, the ones, uh, the original units, they had a metal rod you put down the end for enhanced effect. This model does not come with it, and to be honest, I don't recommend using the metal rods in them. I just keep bringing that up because a lot of people have these as scientific curiosities, and they don't realise that in some of them, the metal rod, when you put it into the end, is referenced the mains, and it would be in this one if you did that. But I, I can't actually use this one at the bench because it, I've got electronic components all around the bench. And this thing creates a massive electrical field. It's, you know, the risk of it actually damaging stuff because it is basically a high voltage RF transmitter. This thing will glow orange. Uh, well, it's got its own video. The the Violet One, Violet Raid, the Arson Val uh, unit. Uh, if you look at my videos, you'll, you'll find that. I can't even remember the name of the video, but not to worry. And the idea behind these units is it's an uh, ozone generator which uses your body as one of the electrodes and the uh, these glass lamps as the other electrode. Now, if you just applied high voltage without these, if it was just the metal rods or sticking out the end, as I've mentioned before in ozone generation, then if you actually have two electrodes, in the case of this, uh, one of them is effectively referenced to ground. In the case of the traditional violet ray type unit, it actually is physically referenced to ground via the mains. This one, I think, must be coupling back internally. It must have a capacitive coupling plate to actually couple onto your body. But the idea is that uh, if you had just metal plates and you put that high voltage across, a spark would jump across and it would be quite unpleasant. It would be quite stabby and stingy uh, and it wouldn't create a desired effect of the creating ozone. So what they do in this case is they have that sort of grounded plane, which is your body. They have the bulbs here and it's basically that electrode inside a glass globe filled with neon. That's what the orange glow is. And the glass separates, that's an insulator, so the neon couples it all the way to the surface of that. And then because there's no direct electrical connection, it capacitively couples through as a series of tiny little sparks. And that gives us a fizzing sound. And uh, oh, a slight, I wouldn't even say, hold on, I'll just tell you. Let's see if I can get a tingle off this. We'll put it up to its highest setting. Not really getting anything in the way of tingles at all. Even when I try it in the face. No, it's not quite the same as the mains one, which is more ferocious, but this one is notably milder. And the concept is that, you know, it, it is relying on the quackery, the visual effect and the sort of like the sounds and the, the slight sensation to give the effect that it's doing something miraculous. But all it's really doing is creating the ozone. But um, I suppose ultimately the whole concept behind these is that you want to sort of give a, a bit of a light show and sound show for the uh, dramatic effect. So let's open this up 
And I'm deducing that the way to open it is posh these little black catches here. I'm not sure if you can just change the whole output, but I'm wondering if these uh, things in the end are actually just neon indicator lamps. That would be a, a good option because it would be it means that you wouldn't need to get a custom component made. So that's popped up there. Is that going to stay popped up? No, it's just popped back in. This is what happens with these. So let's uh, try and get this out. Now I want to say, if you do have male pattern baldness, uh, embrace it because, you know, it's a perfectly normal thing. I actually quite like the visual effect of male pattern baldness. I'm, now I've been distracted, I have got this off now, I see a little wire that goes into the middle of this, presumably a high voltage transformer. And then it couples onto these glass tubes. Now, do these even have electrodes in them? I don't even see electrodes. I wonder if it's just coupling. Is this a conductive rubber in some way? I think... Hold on, let's get the meter. Let's uh, grab a random meter. Let's grab... Let's grab this little meter for a change. And stick it to ohms. Uh, so let's see if there's any con condu conductive rubber in there. Yes, it is. It's conductive, a layer of conductive rubber, which is coupling onto the back of those globes. Is this conductive at the front, then? No, it's not. Oh, this is interesting. That's quite neat. That's quite a clever way of coupling capacitively onto the back of the glass globes. So that is a separate layer of conductive rubber uh, coupling onto the back of those glass globes in there. Does this actually pop out? I'm cautious, I don't want to break this thing because it seems it's quite appealing in a way. But then again, I'm noticing that these are just sort of, they're held in with silicon, which suggests they may not easily come out. I don't even see electrodes in them. I'm just going to shine a torch down the end of it and see if I can see an electrode. No, it, it looks like it might just be a sealed globe with no electrode inside. That's weird. See, you do get neon indicator lamps with the sort of screw-in base. That, that would have been a really cheap way of doing this because then you could have just used off-the-shelf uh, lamps and just connected to one of those electrodes and that would have actually given that coupling effect inside. Yeah, so let's uh, see if we can get the rest of it open. So as I was saying, yeah, male pattern baldness, if you're, if you're male, then it happens, you know. I, if any, I don't know why men are so paranoid about being bald. If you honestly think that uh, a woman is not going to desire you because your hair isn't in the correct quantities, then perhaps you're looking at the wrong type of woman. Because any woman who uh, puts uh, appearance before personality is just probably not worth bothering with. That, that's your top uh, love tips from Clive. Hold on, I should actually read this label. I should put my reading glasses on, that would be even better. Then I'd actually be able to read it. Okie dokie, it says... Arbutus Follicles Hair Rejuvena Rejuvenation Centre Inc. Troxinator model HM10 number A0000. This isn't the first one, is it? Hmm, odd. Maybe they just didn't bother putting a proper serial number on it. Uh, this is rechargeable, by the way, which is unusual. So let's see if we can get this label off, because I have a sneaky feeling there's a screw under here. It might be wrong, there might not be a screw under here, but the only way to find that out is to get this label off. It's not coming off. It's quite a thick label. There's a recess under it. Oh, they filled that in with silicon. They don't want us opening this. Challenge accepted. Yeah, they've potted that in. They, they're trying to keep people out of the top secret technology in here, which is not that secret. It's an interesting implementation, the fact that they've got rid of the mains reference because uh, the standard violet ones are just a bit vicious electrically. Oh, look at that. That's a big cell. 
standard 18650 and they've got a copper tape onto the back metalization in here which is that is the hand electrode and this battery is also held in by this foam pad is this internally protected it's not internally protected cell but that's okay it will have protection circuitry on the board let's get that the board out so I'm seeing a capacitor here by the look of it and the coil I'm guessing the capacitor Oh, it might be part of a resonance circuit, or it might just be charging the capacitor up and then dumping it through the coil. Hard to say. This is quite an interesting thing. It's a... a I'll have to look that up. PCA EPA4205D 0948Y um, It looks like a standard high-voltage transformer. I wonder what its application is. The battery is glued in. That's a bit annoying. So what have we got in the back? There looks that looks like a possibly a switching transistor. I'm going to have to be careful not to short this out because I think this thing is fully charged. Um, what do we have here? What is that little device there? There's the microcontroller that you'd expect to find. The the copper tape is connected to the negative of the battery. Uh, it's actually the wire is going onto the copper tape and then it's going to the negative end and the copper tape is then stuck onto the uh, metal. But how good an electrical connection does that make? Would that not require... Is it, Maybe it's capacitive coupling again. Let's... Uh, hold on, I'll just bring the usual meter in. We'll just check that for continuity. So there's the metal backing. Let's check we've got... Oh, it does. It is connecting onto it. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing that these components down here are to do with the charging of the cell. Um, quite hard to read those tiny numbers because I can't actually get in close enough with the magnifying glass, which is a bit annoying. But the chip in there, and I'll look it up afterwards, is a BRP7CKE6UK. Okay, I don't know what this little thing is, this little little package. It's marked PCA EPC3446. GLF um, It's quite densely packed The LED display has a little resistor array from the microcontroller It's being driven directly from the microcontroller The unit can detect when the battery is It can monitor the voltage of the battery It detects when it's running low because it displays E for empty C pulses when it's charging It won't operate when it's charging Presumably because it's referenced to the ground at that point and uh, it might cause problems with circuitry. Um, having said that, the high voltage transformer here, of course, it's all in the output bits, but they still think there'd be a, quite a strong radiated field in this. I suppose the metal is acting as a sort of screen for the electronics as well. Uh, I'm not sure what that package is. Is that a small inductor? It's not going to be easy to get off because they've soldered that on, that little sort of shielding case. There's position for another component here. Diode across that capacitor, if that is a capacitor. It looks like a capacitor. Um, so what boosts the voltage up initially? Oh, that may be an inductor. That might be a boost circuit, maybe. That's just a wild guess. It's still possible they could just be... Uh, pulsing this, uh, it might just have a low voltage uh, primary. So what is that component? I'm guessing it's going to be a MOSFET. I'm just making sure I don't short anything out here. BTA225B. Is that not a triac? Or a thyristor? So it's being triggered. There's the coil connections. 
Then there's this capacitor. I wonder if it charges that capacitor up to a high voltage. It's quite odd. Nothing is overly visible because there's quite a generous screening, probably to protect it from the uh, effect of the RF being generated to high voltage. This is a. Uh, it's getting a bit rambly. Ultimately, there's not really much to say, is there? I'm going to have to. Um, I'm going to have to trace this out. So I'm going to be back in a moment after I've done that. A little bit of exploration later, and it turns out the circuitry is actually very straightforward. Uh, the little transformer thing here, the little anonymous metal can thing, appears to be a step-up transformer, with what looked like a transistor next to it actually being a double diode package. It's got a double diode with the centre tapped, but they're just using two diodes in series, presumably to increase the voltage rating. That then charges this capacitor, which is this capacitor here, uh, which is in series with the primary of what may actually be, haven't actually found this yet, but I think it may be a xenon trigger transformer. Could be wrong, but it has the same sort of pinout and sort of arrangement of connections. Um, the capacitor has that protective diode across it, that's that little uh, diode there. And uh, so it charges that uh, capacitor up in series with the coil, the primary coil of the uh, high voltage transformer. And then when the microcontroller fires the triac, it shunts the this circuit here, which shunts that capacitor, the uh, results of sudden current flow. But because the triac is a bi-directional device, I'm thinking it may actually work a bit like a tra traditional resonant violet wand, in the sense that uh, the coil, the current will, will not just flow in one direction, it'll sudden, there'll be a bit of oscillation backwards and forwards, sort of, sort of resonance uh, when that fires. Could be wrong. But it's, that's certainly what it looks like. And then the other side of that transformer is just basically it's connected to the zero volt rail and then it's a really, really high voltage, lots of windings, and it's going to the output and that's what results in the high voltage, which is coupled with uh, respect to uh, the sort of ground rail, which is capacity coupled from the metal inside of this. It's, so it's actually fairly straightforward. The bulk of the work is probably in the software after that, really, it's just uh, the f software has the functions of detecting the uh, battery charge status, which is probably down to this little chip down here, which will be a, a battery charge and monitor chip. Um, so it can uh, monitor when it's charging uh, the state of charge, and also it acts as a 15-minute timer. So when you turn this unit on, it will turn off 15 minutes later. And that's considered one treatment, although 15 minutes must drag, because that's quite a long time. The power supply it came with is one of those excruciatingly light power supplies. I think we should open this up. Uh, and this one puts out 5 volts. So it's sort of USB-ish and it just plugs straight into the unit to charge it. So let's uh, see if we can pop that label off. I'm thinking there's probably some screws under there. I would guess that this is a fairly generic USB-ish type power supply inside. It may be one of those ones where the circuit board is fairly universal and it has the uh, uh, the leads coming straight off it, but also may have the holes for a USB connector. It just strikes me as being that sort of type of product. It's squirmily light. Let's see what the separation's like inside for safety. There's nothing really metal on the output of that too. It's got good separation. It doesn't have the USB port and output. It's got a proper uh, class Y capacitor. It does keep its separation. The class Y jumps. The class Y jumps quite a distance. They've not compromised anything at all. They've got one of the leads going right over to the mains incoming supply. That's quite good. So it's this sort of uh, fusible resistor. It's got the general power supply, probably a little bit of suppression in the form of that capacitor there, but look of it. Uh, an inductor for uh, a basic filtering, the smoothing capacitors, and then a switch mode chip. Uh, driving the transformer, complete separation with a voltage reference uh, and an opt twice later for feedback, and it looks as though the cable is, sort of, is the double insulated type cable coming out of the transformer, so it actually looks a fairly decent little transformer. So the whole thing, it's quite well made, I have to say.
it's quite neat. Some a serious amount of design effort has gone into this for a product that is potentially slightly quacky. They may, may not consider it quacky. They're probably convinced themselves it's real, but um, it does hark back to the quack era of the Violet One type products. But an interesting imp- implementation. Do you know it does have the effect? It's not as fierce as the mains one, but um, it certainly seems to do what they expect it to do, even if it's not necessarily going to cure baldness. It does have a sterilising effect. It does create localised odour. though. This is an interesting construction here, and I do think they could have saved uh, money by using just standard uh, neon, the lamps, as I mentioned earlier, with the electrodes already inside. Because uh, that would have been, instead of getting custom-made uh, neon electrodes, that's an off-the-shelf item. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, device, so thanks to Gordon in Canada for sending this through. It was well worth taking to bits.